Hello. So it's narrative tarot. My throat is just killing me. So like just bear with me because I feel like I just don't want to extend my voice. It's, it's, a, it's a lot, but I'm also type 2 diabetic, so it's like, is that it? Let's figure, you know, let's go and figure that out. So I'm probably going to take some elderberry after this and see what's going on here. Um, so this video is going to be pretty short. It's about the decks that I regret selling. So there's not that many decks that I regret selling. It's only three. Um, of course, I don't have them. Uh, so it's not like you can see them. But, you know, I'll describe them as best as I can. So the first one is the Manga Tarot. So I, that was one of the first decks that I got. So I got the Zombie Tarot. Um, I got one that was like Celtic. Um, manga tarot shadowscapes um those were some of the first tarots that i got i got karma cards um i got the angel answers doing virtue those were like the first cards that i got so it was just a hodgepodge even this was like one of the first like 10 decks that i got so it was like a hodgepodge of beliefs and systems and most of those decks were influenced just by watching other people so it wasn't like I had an idea of what I really wanted to look at or wanted to explore in tarot so you know I got the manga tarot and I enjoyed the manga tarot actually it wasn't like it was a deep dive deck or serious or anything like that but I felt like it had some critical interesting mental kind of um things going on and it felt like an anime and how even though manga and anime are very much trivialized just as entertainment or tv that there is something deeper in there that you can get particularly when it comes to shows where you watch or like episodes that you read or and stuff like that where you really are keen on the character development of the players in that whole story like you're very interested in um their psychological space and how they grow and develop and i feel like the manga tarot had that it had elements of that it wasn't a deep dive you weren't going to learn about young or Freudian shit like that but it was just interesting so that's the main one of the three that I regret um, so I'm gonna buy it again and keep it in my collection this time because when I was packing it away and I was flipping through it I had good memories on it and I just I remembered that I had done a lot of um, uh, daily challenges, like monthly challenges for tarot with it, and I realized it gave good answers and it gave things to really actually think about, and it worked well when there wasn't a lot that you had to do. So it wasn't great for complicated readings where you had to do this big analysis. But it was very quiet and it it was very much interested in you answering a single question and going in depth with a single question and it wasn't necessarily putting imagery at the forefront it was just kind of like when you think of this what comes up what comes up that's outside of the picture it doesn't have to be you notice the coin and you focus on what the coin means and stuff like that but you can focus on the coin you can look at the coin and then think of some other issue that ties back to your own lived experience outside of the card so 
I really enjoyed the manga tarot for that reason and um, I'm kind of sad that I sold it so I'm gonna have to pay $30 all over again <laughs> It's like in addition to buying it the first time, I had to pay for shipping and then I have to buy it again. You know, it was just like a loss all the way around. Next is the Neon Tarot. This is a tarot deck I don't even think a lot of people know, but it's a tarot deck that is just like it says, is like neon and it's really bright. Um, it doesn't have like the 3D glasses effect, but it's just very bright, like neon color. So it's not like... It could hurt your eyes a little bit, um, and it did kind of like hurt my eyes a little bit, but um, if you're into like um, like Skrillex and Dead Moss and like EDM, um, even like Suicide Squad, the movie that came out with like Will Smith and Robbie, what's her name? I don't know her last name. Margot Robbie, something like that. Um, all of those good characters. Um, you might actually like that deck. It's not like subversive, but I feel like it could fit into like a DC Marvel universe. I don't know which one they're a part of, no lie. Like my friend is a big like freak into that. <laughs> I'm not, but I feel like you could deal with that. So it actually, if your mind was like, or like, um, Limitless, Limitless, um, the movie with Justin Timberlake where he was like really horrible at crying, um, it's about money, um, just in time or something like that, like those, maybe The Matrix too, but I'm not feeling that as much, um, but it's really i feel like it's really about your mind being altered so you can even think about psychoactive psychedelics um hallucinogenic experiences that's what i kind of get if you were to do actual projecting and now that like it's gone it's coming to me that that's what it was but you know i didn't see it at the time so i'm gonna go and see if i can find it again and work with it and work with it um, probably to do some sort of shadow work dealing with mental blocks but mental um, exploring the mind and all of its weirdness so that's the second one and then the last is the kawaii tarot so the kawaii tarot um, I didn't get it thinking like oh it's a safe deck or anything like that or it's a less sturdy deck because some people get decks that, that they think are very light and fun and they don't really judge the deck correctly for me I felt like there was messages there but I felt like I was struggling with pip decks actually or with very minimal decks that you know only had one thing on it coming from right away where you're like I take in a lot even if I don't take in um, the meanings of the cards traditionally that the writer um, said that they meant. I take in a lot of visual symbols. So for me, it was very hard to take in a deck that was so minimal and so not just so minimal. like just so minimal um, and I found myself asking the same question over and over and over and over and again because I just felt like I wasn't getting the answer and so one thing I've learned with working with the okay tarot which is also minimal is that I actually enjoy the clutter free ness of, um, of tarot decks um, they can be just as powerful, right? Um, and I think me constantly searching, not sitting with the blank space and just focusing was what really caused me to not think that the Kawaii Hero was going to work with me or be helpful with me 
doing what I needed to do in my show to work. So that's why I regret that. And especially since I didn't get rid of the okay tarot of like, what was the difference? Um, and tarot decks are different, but I kind of feel like I jumped the gun and was just feeling very disappointed in my inability to intellectually grasp what was going on. And so I kind of like, fuck it. And now I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Backtracking. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to go back and find these decks. Um, they're fairly popular, so it's not like an out-of-print deck where like, you kind of, you really have like shot yourself in the foot. So, um, I'm looking forward to finding them again. Like I said, I had to pay for them had to do the shipping and now I'm paying for it again so it's like a triple loss in cash and you know it goes to show you what jumping the gun has in terms of consequences and when you aren't willing to sit and listen and learn with certain things um, or you see them as insignificant at the time but they end up having like very long-term consequences so that is it guys those are the decks that i regret selling i sold more but most of them i'm like they were either not really my style or i felt like i just wasn't gonna click with them anymore so i was okay with those but these are the three that i'm like definitely i gotta like pull back so thank you for watching i'll talk to you guys later like literally